Hello world, Noah here. Welcome to the next episode of Django by Example. In this episode, we're going to start a new Django project and take a look at the structure of the project and uh, what each individual file will do for us. Now, to write all of our code for Django, we're going to be using an IDE called PyCharm. It's by a company called JetBrains. PyCharm is an incredible IDE for pretty much anything Python that you could possibly want to do, but it has incredible support for Django. It has all kinds of built-in features that are really, really nice and makes everything really easy. Now, uh, you can go to jetbrains.com slash PyCharm, link in the description to download it. And you're going to need to download the Professional Edition because the Professional Edition, as you'll see, contains support for web development, aka Django. If you download the Community Edition, you won't get all of the amazing support for Django that you will with the Professional Edition. Now, you can download a 30-day free trial, but if you don't want to pay for it, and if you're a student in high school or college, you can go to jetbrains.com student and get all of JetBrains products for free, of course, including PyCharm. All you have to do is show proof that you're a student. I think you just upload a student ID or something, and you get all of their programs free for a year, and you can renew every year that you're a student. So I highly recommend that you fill out this form. It's super easy, super quick, and you can get all of their incredible products for free. In the meantime, though, the 30-day free trial will be more than enough. So once you have PyCharm installed, you're going to want to go ahead and open it up, as I will do here. And you should be presented with the uh, start screen for PyCharm. We'll go ahead and create a new project. And we're going to want to choose Django, of course, because we're creating a Django project. Uh, we're, we're going to go ahead and give this a name. So since we're making a programming database, uh, I'm going to name the project Programming Database. You want to pick your Python interpreter. I'm going to be using Python 3.6, although you shouldn't notice a difference really between Python 2 or 3 or an earlier version of Python 3 because uh, Django is supported by Python 2 and 3. Um, for the template language, we want to do Django, and we basically want to leave all of this stuff the same, but for application name, we're going to write pdb underscore app, pdb for Programming Database. We're going to talk about what exactly this means in just a second, um, but once you have the name filled out and the application name, you're going to want to go ahead and hit Create. This will start a new project for you, and you'll notice that it generates a bunch of files for you. We're going to talk about each of these files in order. So the first file right here is manage.py. And you don't need to actually look inside of this file, but manage.py allows us to do a bunch of important um, functions with our Django website. We're going to use it at a couple of different points throughout the series. Um, you basically just access it directly, Python manage.py and whatever you want to do. And it'll let you do things like migrate the database or create a super user account or launch a shell, so on and so forth. Next is the templates folder. This is where all of your HTML templates will go. Uh, when we get to that part where we're actually writing all of the different pages, um, those HTML files will go in there. Now the programming database folder is the project folder. This is the programming database project. And there are three important files in here, settings, URLs, and WSGI. If you take a look inside of settings, this is essentially all of the settings for your project. We aren't going to touch anything in here right now, but we will come here at a few times throughout the series to tweak a couple of things. But this essentially controls all of the settings for your project. If you go to URLs, this is the URL mapping or URL resolver part. That was the first step in that um, diagram that we looked at. So there's a URL pattern built in. If you try to go to uh, an admin page, it will take you to the admin site. We're going to talk about that a lot later on in the episode. But this is where we will define uh, the URL mappings. So if they go to slash, it'll take them to the home page. If they go to slash user slash ID, it'll take them to that user ID page. That's where all of that will go. And WSGI, this uh, we're going to use when we deploy our website. So this WSGI file is what will get run by Apache or Nginx uh, or 
Gunicorn, Gunicorn, I'm not sure what it's called, uh, but one of those services that actually runs your Django application in um, production. So we're going to get to that last thing in the series, and it's not a file that you're going to want to edit at any point. Uh, over here is our app. The difference between an app and a project is that one project can have multiple apps, and one app can belong to multiple projects. Now for most small to medium sized projects, you're only gonna have one project and one app, so the distinction really isn't important. The only thing that does matter is that inside of settings, your app is listed under installed apps. So as you can see, the name is pdb underscore app, and it's listed there. If you set it up the way that I did with, um, with the Django PyCharm start, then it will automatically do that for you. Uh, if you take a look at each of these files, uh, we can start with admin. Admin is where you can register all of your models to show up on the admin site. We're going to talk about that later on. Apps basically just specifies information about your particular app. Not really much you're going to want to do there. Now models is where you actually define all of your models. That was the data, like for example, the user. So each model will be a class that will exist inside of this models um, file. So basically this file will have all of the different models, all the different uh, sets of data that you will need to store. Tests you can use for testing, uh, but we're not really going to cover that, at least not until much later. Um, and then the last file here is views. Each view will just be a function, and essentially the function will be in charge of loading in the template loading in all of the data from the models, sticking the data from the models into the template, and then returning an HTTP response. Uh, that's basically all of the files here. If we want to test this, you'll notice that a run configuration has already been set up for us. And if we hit run, you'll see that it starts up. And if we click here to take a look, you'll see it says it worked. Congratulations on your first Django powered page. So hopefully when you run, you should see this. And if you do, it means that you're ready to move on and actually start working on your website. So that's all for this video. That is the structure of a Django project. As we work through the series, we're going to be filling in all of these different files with uh, different things that we need to make our website work. So as always, subscribe if you want to see more. Like this video if you enjoyed it, and continue on to the next video to learn more Django. Bye for now.